supreme absolute truth is that from which everything emanates. Uh -huh. We see, like I gave the example earlier, chickens come from chickens, dogs come from dogs. But where has this whole world come from? Uh, the scientists want to tell us it comes from nothing. Uh, one day there was nothing, and then there was a big bang, and then everything was there. <laughs> but we never see that something comes from nothing. That's absurd. Huh? That's a, a fairy tale for children. That's not a, a real theory. That's not, you know, they can't really be serious, can they? Huh? They want us to, to expect that this nothingness or emptiness gave rise to everything? How is it possible? Huh? Then that space or the emptiness wasn't really nothingness. Huh? It was something that had tremendous potential. And where does that potential come from? Where does that power come from? Power or energy always has a source. We never see anything that doesn't have a source. So the original source, that is the absolute truth. And the original source, as we went over earlier, it has to be a person. Huh? You know, I, I wish I could find this cartoon. Big Bang Construction Company. Huh? There's a, a bunch of guys with hard hats on, you know, and overalls and, and stuff. And there's a big, big uh, pile of construction materials. You see, you know, boards and girders and roofing stuff and rolls of different material and some, you know, a couple of concrete things and stuff like that. And then there's a, there's a, a line. You see there's a wire snaking out across the ground. And there's a guy with an explosives detonator, right? And they're all standing around waiting, you know, looking at this guy. And there's a big sign that says, Big Bang Construction Company. <laughs> Does anybody believe that you can build a building by blowing up a bunch of materials? Huh? It's crazy, isn't it? So similarly, it's a crazy thing to believe that this universe, as wonderful and finely tuned and, and carefully balanced and amazingly complex as it is, could come from just a big explosion? I mean, that's nonsense. That, that's crazy thinking, huh? That's really, I mean, that's, you know, you got to have uh, consumed a lot of uh, certain intoxicating beverages to even consider a theory like that, <laughs> you know? I can imagine. They must have been all, like, up really late one night, you know, and, and really, really drunk. And like, well, you know, what are we going to tell everybody, you know? <laughs> We can't have this God theory. I mean, this, you know, that's no good because that takes away our power. Huh? So, oh, I know. We'll tell them it came from a big bang. Yeah, that's it. Huh? I mean, it, you know, they must think we're, I don't know what they're smoking, but they must think we're smoking something too if they expect us to believe that. <laughs> what we see is that every complicated construction like a machine you know like this video camera or this computer takes intelligence to put together it takes intelligence to design it takes teamwork of a bunch of very skilled people and then they can put together something nice you know so when we see this universe you know there has to be intelligence behind it it's not possible that this thing could exist uh, just by chance huh it's not possible that it could come from nothing. Look at it. It's so fantastic. So these are all just the uh, theories of very stupid people. Uh, and the people who accept these theories, they all have some hidden agenda. Uh, they want to be, uh, they want to play God. They want to make believe that they are the controller, the owner, the creator, the enjoyer. Uh, the doer, the knower. Huh? But actually, it's God who is all these things. And we're simply along for the ride. That's the real nature of the absolute truth. And this, the spiritual identity of the absolute truth can only be Krishna. Because only Krishna 
has demonstrated all of the symptoms of the absolute truth. Uh -huh. Krishna is known as Bhagavan because uh, Bhagavan or the Supreme Personality of Godhead has six symptoms. He has all power, all wealth, all knowledge, uh, all beauty, and all renunciation. Now, there's one more. Knowledge, wealth, power, all fame. Everyone has heard of God. Huh? Everybody knows about God. So he has all these things in complete abundance, unlimited abundance. Well, we can't find anybody like that in the whole history of the world except Krishna. He's the only person who manifests all these six symptoms of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And uh, of course, the Western society has done uh, a very good job of suppressing this knowledge. Uh, and the, the, the uh, plan to suppress this knowledge goes back at least to the days of the Roman Empire. We've documented all this on our website. Uh, we know that they went down to Alexandria and destroyed the library of Alexandria at least three times. And that's just Emperor Constantine. Uh, they didn't want people to know about the Vedic literature. They didn't want people to know the history of where the actual uh, origins of the human race, human civilization come from. They tried to cover it all up. And now they want to say that there was, you know, some baboon in Africa is everybody's ancestor. <laughs> I had a friend who wrote a poem about that. He said, they say they come from monkeys, and they've proved it through the ages by their total inability to listen to the sages. <laughs> they can't follow the instructions. They can't understand the knowledge given in the scriptures or by the sages. Uh, so they say it's not true. It's just like if somebody, can you imagine... You're talking to some uh, little, little uh, school child, and you say, uh, you know, Einstein gave this theory of relativity where he proved that all motion is relative. And the kid says, I don't believe it. Well, so what? <laughs> Does it mean that the atomic bomb is going to stop working because you don't believe in Einstein's theory? Huh? Does it mean that, you know, all of a sudden, all the laws of the universe are going to change to accommodate your ignorance? No. So just because somebody doesn't believe in a particular understanding or, or knowledge, it doesn't make it untrue. Uh, it may be more advanced than their intelligence can grasp, but that's another thing. Mm -hmm. So anyway, those who are in illusion about the spiritual identity of the Supreme Absolute Truth, they're called Paratattva Brahma. Then there's Sadhya Sadhana Tattva Brahma. Illusion about Sadhana Bhakti, the means of spiritual perfection, and Sadhya, the object to attain, to be attained by such Sadhana, or in other words, Prema Bhakti. Now here's, this is a real problem. We see around the world there are so many religions, so many spiritual paths, so many schools. And uh, even within our own lineage, there are so many organizations, and so many devotees, and so many teachers and gurus and stuff like that. But very, very few of them, only the lineage holders, can explain the complete science of the absolute truth. Just as a test, if you have uh, access to some other guru or spiritual teacher or a church or something like that, just ask them to explain what we talked about earlier today about consciousness. Hmm? What is consciousness? How does consciousness work? Why is consciousness so important? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The odds are none of them can explain it. We certainly never heard any explanation of consciousness when we were in ISKCON, for example. Uh, 
Yet the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, the first thing that Krishna tells Arjuna is he starts talking about consciousness. As soon as Arjuna accepts Krishna as his guru and says, okay, Krishna, you help me solve my problem. What's the first thing that Krishna tells Arjuna? First of all, he tells him, you're, consci you're in the wrong consciousness. He says, you're lamenting over the things that are not worthy of grief. You're in the wrong consciousness. And then he proceeds to describe the correct consciousness, that everything which is material is temporary and does not therefore really exist in the full sense of the word. And everything that is spiritual is eternal and therefore fully real. So a person who is actually in knowledge cares only for the eternal and not for the temporary. That's the first thing, the first instruction that Krishna gives to Arjuna. Huh? The very first thing. Yet, how many spiritual teachers